In this video, we want to continue um, in section 5.1. We've been talking about angles, and now we want to talk about the sectors of circles. Now, first a little review of how we defined radians. We defined radians that if our radius of our circle, our unit circle, was 1, and then the arc length, this distance here around the circle was also 1, then this angle in the middle was defined to be one radian. So all of those um, equals one. So one of the advantages of using radians is it allows us to look at this arc length in relation to this central angle. And so that's what we want to kind of look at here today. We want to look at two formulas. Our two formulas are this. If we know the central angle, and this angle is in radians, that's important. If we know that that angle is in radians, um, then this arc length right here, this curvature right there, that piece of that edge of that piece of the pi, is just equal to S times R theta. Theta's got to be in radians. If we have the same center angle and the same radius, and now we're looking at the whole area of this little pi wedge shape, that is going to be one-half r squared theta. So this allows us to use these formulas when we have our central angle in radians. So let's look at an example. Find the arc length and the area of the sector. Given the radius is 15 and our central angle is pi over 6. So our arc length, S, and that would be this distance right here, is R times theta, which would just be 15 times pi over 6, which is 5 pi over Two and if let's say let's say this is meters, so then this would be meters is the arc length right there. Now, if we wanted to find the area of this wedge shape piece of pi, our area is one half r squared times theta. So you will see this r squared will give us our meters squared as we go to calculate this. So this is one half 15 squared times pi over six. And this gives us 75 pi over four meters squared because we're squaring the 15. So these are pretty straightforward formulas. We just want to make sure we understand the difference when we're trying to find this arc length, this distance around the outside of the circle compared to the area in the circle. And you can see with these formulas, if our angle was 2 pi, it was the whole circle. This would be r times 2 pi, which would be... 2 pi r, which is our formula for the circumference of a circle. And if it was 2 pi over here, this would be 1 half r squared times 2 pi, which would give us pi r squared, which is our formula for the area of a circle. So this would actually be circumference here. So you can see this formula checks out with what we already know about circles. But this is if our angle is not 2 pi, but something else, this formula holds. So let's look at an example, another example. So let's say r is 3.5, theta is pi over 12. Our arc length, this part right here on the circle, which we use s, is just 3.5 times pi over 12. The area is 1 half 3.5 squared times pi over 12. And we can put those in the calculator to get our decimals. Okay. Another example. The sector of a circle, switching it up a little bit, has an area of 26.25 centimeters, and the central angle is 2.1 ra radians. So this is 2.1. 
So our area formula is one half r squared times theta. And so we have 26.25 is one half r squared. My theta is 2.1. So this would give me, if we figure this out, this gives me R squared is 25. So R would be 5. Now, I know plus or minus 5 when you take the square root, but we're dealing with the radius of a circle. So we just have the positive case. Now, if we wanted to find the arc length of this, this would just be 5 times 2.1 which is 10.5 centimeters. I guess this should be also, if we want to stay with our units, that should be um, also centimeters. Now, one of the things we want to look at with these formulas is talk about some definitions and talk about two things. We want to talk about a linear velocity and angular velocity. Now, before we talk about the formulas for these, let's talk about what they are. Linear velocity is basically the speed or how fast you are going. Angular velocity is how fast you are turning. Now, let me give you an analogy for this. Um, if I think of people in the band. Now, some of you may be in the band, some of you may not be in the band, but I think everybody can relate to this. Imagine you're in the band, and I don't know what this is called because I haven't been in the band since I was like in middle school, but the idea here is that you want to turn all of these people, each of my little lines here represents a person, and we want to turn this group, pod, squad, whatever it's called, of four people, we want to turn them 90 degrees. So this person has to go from here to there, this person has to go from here to there. This person has to go from here to there. And then this person has to go from here all the way to here. Hence why you don't want to be the outside person, right? You always want to be on the inside. So you got the little distance. Now, if you think about these, all three of these would have the same angular velocity. Oops. See if I can spell angular right. All three of these would have the same idea for our angular velocity because each has turned 90 degrees or pi over 2 if we want to go radians, right? That's the same. But the linear velocity would be very different because if they go from here to here, for all of them, in the same amount of time, this person goes a very short distance, so they're going to go much slower. This person has to go a long distance in the same amount of time, so they are going to have to go much faster. They're both turning 90 degrees, but the linear velocity, how fast they are going. Okay, So that's kind of a rough idea. It's not a perfect analogy, but it kind of gives you the idea of the difference here. Okay, so first, let's look at angular velocity. Angular velocity is W, is the angle that you turn divided by the time. So if you turn 90 degrees in one minute, your angular velocity would be pi over two radians per minute. Okay, now, if you have your linear velocity, this is your arc length over time. This is how far you go. Think about the wheel here, right? Our angular velocity is how far did you turn? 2.1. Let's say this dot went to this dot in one minute. That would be 2.1 radians per minute but that would be 10.5 centimeters per minute because they want this entire distance here in one minute. So that's the, uh, the difference, okay? Linear velocity is how fast you're going, you know, straight line or the curve speed. You take arc length divided by time. And then angular velocity is how fast you're turning per time. Now, 
we can kind of combine these and kind of use similar information where your velocity is your arc length over time, but if you notice this theta over time is just right here. So if you take your angular velocity times your radius, that includes all of that. Okay. So let's look at an example. A wheel with radius 10 centimeters spins four times in 20 seconds. So we have a wheel that is spinning four times in 20 seconds. Now, first, you have to think four times is what in radians? Well, one time around is 2 pi. 2 times around is 4 pi, 6 pi. So this is 8 pi radians. So my angular velocity would be 8 pi radians divided by 20 seconds. So if we wanted to then do that as a decimal, we could say 8 pi divided by 20 is 1.257. So we could say 1.257 radians per second. So that is how fast this is spinning. Now, linear velocity is just our arc length time divided by our time, or from our formula back here, it is just our r times our angular velocity. So our r is 10 centimeters. So our angular velocity is just 10 centimeters times 1.257 radians per second, which would give us 12.57 centimeters per second. Now, one of the things we haven't really talked about, but I will mention it here because it kind of comes up as I'm focusing on units. One of the thing about radians, radians technically have no units. You don't actually do math with the units. You'll notice here, we don't even really use the radians. We just have centimeters per second. And that's one of the advantages of using radians is radians have no units. We still, I still write radians here just so we know what that number represents. But when you're looking at your final answer and you're doing your calculations, if you have, you don't have to do deal with units when you're dealing with radians, which is one of the great things about radians. So we have some of these formulas at the start, which are very straightforward, and then we look at some um, more advanced ones when we're talking about this linear velocity, right? Once again, think of it this way, is if you were sitting on this edge of this merry-go-round and it was going around how fast you would be going, that is your centimeters per minute. How far you turned in a minute is your angular velocity. So they're both dealing with how fast you're doing. One is how fast you're moving in terms of speed, right? And the other is how fast you are turning. All right, you are now ready to do the homework. 5.1, sectors of circles.